Hey guitar fam and friends, how's it going? Uh, welcome to the song lesson. I have to be quick with this one because Chelsea and Lillian are out for a walk. And that's all the time I have to do this lesson. I have 20 minutes, so let's go. Um, if you need any help with this song or any other songs, go to guitarfam.com and create a complimentary account. When you do that, every guitar fam member gets a complimentary one-on-one -on -one private video lesson with me. So you can schedule that on the site at your earliest convenience. I'd love to meet up with you and help iron out a plan for your success. Also, uh, on guitarfam.com, you'll find the resources for this um, particular video lesson, uh, the tab, the chord chart, and the jam track too. So go there, get those, and let's get into it. All right, the first thing we need to look at is just the chords that you're gonna need to play the song. Uh, start off with a G major chord, and I use this version of it, the three finger version with my pinky up here. There's a good reason for that. We'll see as soon as the next chord, because next chord is a G major seven chord. You have to lower this note with your pinky by one half step and grab it with your index finger. So that's why I'm important to have that change a lot this song, okay? So G, G major seven. Then a C is next, that's, this is a good voicing to go to a C, because all your fingers are kind of in the same, the ballpark they need to be in to make it to that C. Next is an A minor. Next is a D seven. And I do use a D major sometimes throughout the song too, but most of the time it's a D7. So if you don't know a D7, now's a good time to learn it. This note right here on the B string just goes back one whole step down to the first fret. You have to change your fingering a little bit to make that happen. That's the difference between a D and a D7. I also use a D over F sharp, so just a normal D with your thumb grabbing the second fret of the low E string. And my thumb is also muting that A string. So D over F sharp, E minor, B minor. And if you're struggling with bar chords at all, uh, go to guitarfam.com, create your complimentary account, and you'll be able to access the first module of all of our premium courses in the bar chord and master class is one of those courses you get access to, so you'll be able to get your bar chords down and start the process. Uh, the next is a G7. So if you're making this G, just lift up your pinky and put your index finger on the first fret of the high E. Then you need an A7. It's just like a normal A. So you're just not fretting the G string, just let your finger off. You play an open G string. And that is it. So those are the chords you need uh, for that. Um, all right, let's take a look at the strumming pattern, uh, the main strumming pattern that we'll be using. Now this isn't the only one, but it is for like for 85% of the song. We'll address the other ones in the chorus when it uh, comes, when they come up. Uh, it's a, almost a straight eighth note strumming pattern. So you wanna have this going the entire time. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And the only thing you're leaving out is the first upstroke in the measure. So one and two Okay, so one, two, three, So take that as slow as you need to. If that's new for you, you know, keep your hand going while leaving a, an upper down out. Just get that down. And then slowly work it up to speed. Separate it from the chords and the chord progressions. That'll make it easier when you bring them all together to learn the song. But you need to get it up to speed. It's pretty quick. Okay, um, let's go ahead and jump into the intro of this song. There are three basic parts that you need, or three categories of parts that you need to learn. The intros, the verses, and the courses. Uh, luckily, the intros and the courses are all the same, so once you learn it once, you've got it for the entire song every time that particular part appears. So the intro is just a G major for one measure with that strumming pattern, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, and then a G major seven for one measure. And then 
and C for two measures. And an A minor for one measure. And a D7 for one measure. And then G for two measures. Okay, and it's the same every time you see the intro or re-intro in the song, it's always the same. So let me play that intro for you and then I'll show you how to dress this uh, strumming pattern up and make it a little more dynamic. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now, I had some dynamics in that strumming pattern. I wasn't just playing it down, down, up, down, up, down, up with all the same intensity. Like that, I was uh, putting some dynamics in like this. And the way I did that is I only hit the low notes or the lower, you know, a couple, two or three notes on beats, on the downstrokes for beats one and three. My upstrokes were as light, pretty much as light as I can make them. And then I really dug in on the downstrokes that hit on two and four, but I did that through all the strings. So one, two, three, four, two, And that's exaggerating, of course. If I wasn't exaggerating it, it gets much more um, subtle, but it's really nice. So instead of having a straight pattern like this, it's not very dynamic, you end up with this. So just keep that in mind, work on that on its own, you know, with your strumming practice time. And then once you start getting the chord progressions and the chord changes in the song down, that'll make it, the song sound that much better for you. So that's the end drill. All right, the verses of this song are where things get complicated. It's not that they're that hard to play, it's that they're all very long and they're all different. Um, and that makes it a little bit tough to keep track of where you are. But there is kind of a, um, a method or a formula to this. Um, verse one, Verse two and verse three, there's three verses. Uh, verse one is 48 bars long. Verse two is 32 bars long. And verse three is 48 bars long. And uh, I broke this up and wrote it out and I realized that there are six phrases of eight bars each in the verse one and two. Six times eight, 48, right? And then um, verse two is just four uh, phrases of eight, which is 32, right? And now if you look at it that way, Verse one is six phrases of eight bars each. Then it becomes easier to keep track of where you are. So the odd phrases, one, three, and five, are always all the same. And I'll show you that chord progression. But the even ones, two, four, and six, are always all different. So you really have to keep on your toes uh, to know exactly where, you're, where you are. They're not all always different, but they're not consistent throughout each verse. Let me show you um, how I really think about this. Uh, so the staple uh, eight bar phrase that's always the same you know, on uh, one, three, and uh, five is this right here. So G major for one measure. G major seven for one measure. Then C for two measures. Then A minor for two measures. Then D seven for two measures. Okay, so that is your, kind of your staple. That's gonna be one, three, and five. Or if you're on verse two that only has four phrases, it's gonna be one and three, always, so odds. Um, now the only thing you have to keep track of are, are the even measures. And they're, they're pretty, like they're using the same chords, but the order of the chords is different. And they're always eight measures, so that helps too. Uh, let's look at uh, phrase two, the second eight bar phrase of verse one, and that's just a G. G major seven. C for two, A minor for one, C for one, G for two. Okay, then you have your odd number phrase, which is the same as one, so it's basically phrase one again. And then uh, phrase four is a little bit different. It goes G for one, G major seven, C for two, A minor for one, C for one, G for 
for one. And now you have a split uh, measure here where you have C for two measures and D, sorry, C for two beats and D for two beats. So one, two, and three, and four. So the strumming pattern doesn't change there. You just have to switch chords in the middle of the strumming pattern. One, two, and three, and four. All right, so after that, phrase five is our standard phrase. Nothing changes there. And then phrase six is a little bit different yet. It goes G for one measure. G major seven, C for two, A minor for one, C for one. You have that little tag where things stop and pause and the rhythm, the strumming changes um, to go into the course. Uh, so that one, you have C for one measure and then G with that rhythm. And the rhythm there is one and two, down on three, and then on four, have a down stroke two on the C, and then one on the next measure, and it's just a whole note. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that leads us into the course, which um, anytime you have a course, it's always the same. You don't have to worry about any variations on it. You just have to learn this new rhythm for the first uh, four measures for the course and then you know the chord progression that goes with it. It's G for one measure and the rhythm is down, up, down. And that's it. So one and two and three, four. And I keep my hand going the whole time again. One, two, three, four. Then I switch to a C and play that same exact rhythm for the next measure. One and two and three, four and and then the next measure starts off the same way. One and two before you hit a C, the downstroke, no upstroke there, and then you go back to a G and do the same rhythm. So in this uh, measure, the third measure of the course, one, two, three, four, that's the rhythm, and then the same rhythm is in the next measure. Only this time on four, you go to a D over F sharp. So one, two, so like what I would recommend is just listening to this a lot. Listen to the bass guitar and the guitar together. Do, 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 do. And that's what you want to be shooting for. Once you get the rhythm in your head, it's much easier to put the chords with it. So if you start at the beginning of the course, it'll be one, two, three, four. And that's all you have to learn. That's the only variation on it. Once you reach this point and go to the E minor in the next measure, all you do is use your standard uh, strumming pattern. So just E minor for one measure. Then B minor for one measure. One, two, three, four, and. Then A minor for one measure. One, two, three, four, and. Then D7 for one measure. Then G for one measure. Uh, sorry, G7. C for one measure. A7 for one measure. A minor for one measure. D7 for one measure. And then you go back into the intro. So I know that's a long string of chords there uh, for the chorus. Uh, what I would recommend doing is working on the strumming on its own you know, for both those first four measures that are a little bit irregular, and then the, uh, the main strumming pattern, once you have that down, just go through the progression. Two, three, four. Make sure you can go to each individual chord on its own. Separate the challenge of strumming and going, changing between chords. Just to make sure or expose any weak chords that you need to work on. And give that its own time. And once you can do that, then bring the strumming together with um, the chord changes here. And this is what the chorus will sound like. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Okay, and then it goes right back into the intro. So really, those are all the parts that you need to learn for the song. From there, it's just a matter of getting the order of the song down. From there, you just do the re-intro. And then you have to worry about a uh, verse two because it's it's the one with uh, four uh, eight bar phrases, that 32 measure one. And the cool thing about this one is it's just the last four phrases of the first verse. So you can just think about wiping out the first two phrases of uh, the first verse and playing verse two from there. So it's the exact same thing as long as you do that. Once you hit the end uh, of verse two, you just do another chorus. Just work your way through the course again. After course two, you just play the reintro again, and then you go into verse three, which is just six phrases of eight bars each. And it's a little bit different this time, but the uh, what I told you holds true here. One, three, and five are the exact same, the standard G, G major seven, C, C, A minor, A minor, D seven, D seven. That's one, three, and five. From there, all you have to worry about is two, four, and six. And you'll see that in, um, in the sheet music or the, um, the chord chart for it. Um, I'll just play through the whole thing and kind of walk you through verse three quickly. So it's the standard phrase for one. Two A minors. Standard one, right? D7 for two. G. G major seven. C for two. A minor for one. C for one, G for one, and then a C, D. You have a split uh, measure there, two bits of C, two bits of D. Phrase three goes back to the standard, st standard one. C twice, A minor twice, D7. Okay, now uh, number four, phrase four is a little bit different. G, G major seven, C twice, A minor once, C once, G twice. And you have your standard one for five, it's an odd number, right? E, G major seven, C twice, A minor twice, D7 twice, and G, uh, the last phrase, uh, phrase six, G major seven, C twice, A minor once, C, and then you have the standard, the standard one to go into the course, and that's a, the end of every uh, verse is that standard one, or that one that goes, that splits the difference between to get you into the course. Okay, after that, you just play the chorus again, but this time, as you play through the chorus, uh, here, I'll just go through it, and what happens is you end up tagging uh, or restating the last phrase of the chorus a total of three times before ending the song on our G. Here you go, so one, two, three, four, one, two, you can So what I did is I, ended, I added a little G, G major seven, A minor, D seven onto the end of the chorus. And you do that three times.
And as soon as you hit that last G on the one of the next measure, that's the end of the song. So you have one, two, three, four. And it just kind of slows down there. But that's the way you end the song. It's basically a chorus with a tag of that G, G major seven, A minor, D, three times. And then you have boom, boom. That's the entire thing. I know that this song isn't that difficult technically to play, but it is kind of tough to keep um, your mind around where you are in the song. So I would just listen to it a lot, a lot, a lot before digging into it. And look at that, like when you're listening to music like that, if you're doing active listening, you are practicing the song. You're trying to be aware of where you are, you know, what lyrics cue you to go into a course or for a certain irregular progression in these verses, the lyrics will really help keep you on track. All right, that's it for this one. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the song, you can leave them in the comments below or email us support at guitarfam.com. And if you need any extra help, go to guitarfam.com and schedule that first complimentary one-on-one -on -one private lesson with me. I'll be looking forward to meeting you. And leave uh, any other uh, requests for cover songs you'd like to see on the channel in the comments below too. See ya.
another night It's gonna be a long one She draws the shade and hangs her head to cry She wonders how it ever got this crazy She thinks about a boy Time